Hello, I'm Dr. Christopherson. I'm a medical doctor and PhD student at University Hospital Bispebjerg and Fredericksburg in Denmark. And I'm happy to present our work on the effect of citalopram and reboxetin on urethral closure mechanism in women. I have no disclosures. First of all, urethral pressure is crucial to the continence mechanism in women and must be higher than bladder pressure in order to maintain continence both during rest and during stress episodes. For decades, the role of the serotonin system in regulation of urethral closure mechanism and with that the continence function has been investigated and debated. Traditionally, Central serotonin pathways are considered having a positive effect on urethral pressure. And as you can see here, the sacral spinal cord is densely innervated by serotonin nerve terminals. However, recent clinical trials and animal studies show mixed findings. As example, duloxetine, which is a serotonin noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor, increases urethral pressure in women and decreases the symptom load of urinary incontinence. Whereas a 5H2C receptor agonist showed surprisingly to decrease urethral pressure in a dose dependent manner in women. Further, Observational studies suggest that exposure to selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors is associated with a significant increased risk of urinary incontinence. They found around a 1.5 fold higher risk of having urinary incontinence in women using SSRIs compared to controls, but there's no placebo controlled studies addressing this association. So what is the effect of a pure serotonin reuptake inhibitor on urethral closure mechanism? We have conflicting results from clinical studies testing different serotonergic agents and observational studies suggesting an association between SSRI use and urinary incontinence. So given the high incidence of SSRI use, we found it highly interesting and important to evaluate the effect of SSRI on urethral pressure in women. So to do that, we conducted a randomized double-blind placebo and active control crossover trial in healthy females, evaluating citalopram and SSRI and riboxetine and noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor as active positive control against placebo. We enrolled 24 women and randomized them to one of six treatment sequences. We had three study days with eight days washout between them and all 24 subjects completed the study. Due to different time to maximum plasma concentration of citalopram and riboxetine, three and two hours respectively, the subject received 40 milligrams citalopram or placebo at time zero, and after one hour, they received placebo to riboxetine on placebo days and 8 mg riboxetine on riboxetine days and of course two times placebo on placebo days. After a total of three hours we assessed our outcome. So our primary outcome was the opening urethral pressure at rest measured with urethral pressure reflectometry UPR. UPR is a sensitive and very reproducible method to assess the cross-sectional area of urethra and the urethral pressure. Very briefly, an ultra-thin plastic bag is inserted to the urethra and while a pump slowly increases the pressure in the back, the cross-sectional area of the back is measured. And in that way, the method can assess the pressure needed to open the urethra, the opening urethral pressure. So, what did we find? We found that citalopram increased the opening pressure slightly compared to placebo, 6.6 um, .6 centimeter of water, and that riboxetine markedly increased urethral pressure with an estimate of 30 centimeter of water. Previous studies with riboxetine support these results. Klasko found that a single dose of 12 milligram SS riboxetine increased the opening pressure with 46.5 cm of water compared to placebo. And in an 
clinical study in women with urinary incontinence, SINA found that SS rebuxetin decreased the incontinence episode frequency with 23.7% compared to placebo. So what could the clinical perspective of these findings be? It might be a controversial suggestion, but perhaps we should consider rebuxetin as a treatment option for women with depression and stress urinary incontinence. It could be one of the considerations when prescribing an antidepressant treatment. Of course, the effect of and potential gain for these women should be evaluated in a clinical study before implementation. So to sum up, we found that citalopram and SSSRI increase the urethral pressure slightly compared to placebo. So SSRI do not seem to decrease urethral pressure. And with that, it seems very unlikely that SSRI should induce or aggravate urinary incontinence. Rebuxetin, on the other hand, increased the urethral pressure substantially, and it raises the question whether there might be a gain in treating women with both urinary incontinence and depression with rebuxetin instead of, for example, an SSRI. Thank you for listening.